ירושלים, ויחזקם, ויחזקם, ויהי בן מגדלים, ויהי בן מגדלים. Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of Hebrew numbers. Today we will cover the number 8, which has associations with fatness and abundance. The Hebrew word for 8 is Shmona, Genesis 5-4. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat son and daughter. Genesis 17-12. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man-child in your generation. He that is born in the house, or bought with money of a stranger, which is not of thy seed. The ordinal number associated with eight in Hebrew is Shmini. Leviticus 23:36. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire, unto Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. So, you know that this is talking about Sukkot, the eighth day of Sukkot, and when we get to that eighth day, it's called Shmini Atzeret. Atzeret is the word that is uh, translated here as solemn assembly. It's the eighth day assembly. The reason we want to look at the uh, ordinal number is because there's a word which appears uh, just a few times in Tanakh, Shminit, Psalm 6-1, to the chief musician on Niginot upon Shminit, a psalm of David. O Yahweh, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy heart displeasure. First Chronicles 15:21. In Matitya, in Eliphela, in Mikneya, in Obed-Edom, in Yael, in Azaziah, with harps on the Sheminit to excel. So, the Sheminit, it's unknown what it really means. Uh, some people have postulated that it's an eight-stringed harp. You know that the number eight is integral in music, it is the eighth note of the scale, is what we call the octave, that's from a uh, romance root, octo, meaning eight. So the eighth note is when we get back to the same tone, the same sound again, only it's higher. It's the same note, only it's the next octave up, eight notes up. So shminut uh, is clearly a musical term. The word shmona comes from a root, shemen, as a noun, which means oil. Genesis 28:18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Exodus 27:20. 20. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always. Most of the oil that we see in Tanakh is olive oil. There are other kinds of oil. There's an oil of myrrh. But this olive oil is used for many things, and here it is used in the lamps. It's what provides the energy for the fuel to burn to bring the light. Exodus 29.7 Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. So we see that the oil is used for anointing. Leviticus 2.5 And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mingled with oil. The oil, the shemen, is part of an offering. Deuteronomy 33.24 And of Asher he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. This is Moses' prophecy when he's prophesying at the end of his life over the twelve tribes. And uh, this is a little bit cryptic. What does it mean that he's dipping his foot in oil? Uh, based on this scripture, there are people who are looking in the area of where the tribe of Asher uh, inherited land. They're looking in that corner up there in the Mediterranean, 
looking for oil. Song of Songs 1-3, because of thy savor of thy good ointment, thy name is as ointment poured forth, therefore do the virgins love thee. So Shemin is also translated as ointment. We see some kind of healing properties and beautifying properties associated with the oil. There's a word which appears in the New Testament in Matthew 26:36 and other places. Then cometh Yeshua with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Gethsemane is made from two Hebrew words, Gath Shemin. So we've already discussed the Shemin, it's the oil. Gath is used other places in Tanakh. It's translated as wine press or simply press. And the process of getting the oil out of the olives requires a very heavy weight and even uh, like a screw kind of mechanism to force the weight down upon the olives so the oil can run out. So there's a big heavy stone which is put on top of the olives to force the oil out of the olives. I'm sure you can draw many comparisons between that physical process and the process that Yeshua went through in that garden. As a verb, this root means to grow fat. Deuteronomy 32.15 But Yeshua and waxed fat and kicked. Thou art wax and fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So the idea, Moses is telling the people, that when you become comfortable in your life and you have all kind of uh, physical needs met, it's, it's a tendency of the people to turn away from God. Isaiah 6.10 Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. The same idea that uh, fatness will cause you to just relax in your situation and turn away. It's also used as an adjective, Genesis 49.20. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, or as the NASB says, rich, and Septuagint it says plentiful, and he shall yield royal dainties. Very interesting because here in Jacob's prophecy, over his twelve sons, Asher again is associated with this Shemen. Ezekiel 14, 34, 14 I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall be their fold. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. So the idea here is that the pasture is healthy, the grass is good, there's plenty of it, there's an abundance there for the sheep to feed from. What does eight mean in the spiritual life of a believer? We know that God has an abundant nature, a generous nature, and he means for us to have an abundant life. John 10.10 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. 3 John 1, 2 Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. When your soul is doing well, your body will do well. Ephesians 3.20 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. 1 Peter 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah from the dead. Uh, it's interesting to see that there were eight people on the ark in Noah's day, right? Noah and his wife, three sons, and three daughters-in-law. And they show us the resurrection from the dead. The whole earth was destroyed. But they are the people that were able to continue life on the planet. 
1 Timothy 1.14 And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Messiah Yeshua. 1 Thessalonians 3.12 And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love toward one another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. And I pray this over you. I'm sure there are many other uh, inferences that you can draw out about these related roots. In the meantime, Pesimitainayim al Shamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. <laughs>